Our next question comes from Marcel. Marcel asks, what are real use cases today for the unbanked in Latin countries? This is an interesting question, Marcel. And um, I've traveled a lot uh, throughout uh, Central America, the Caribbean, and South America. Uh, so I've been to many uh, Latin or Spanish-speaking countries, um, and I've had conversations with many people from these countries to see what are their primary motivations. Um, the primary uh, applications for the unbanked uh, are, are not that big yet at the moment in Latin America, but that depends on how you define the unbanked. So if, for example, as the unbanked, you're talking about people living in slums uh, like uh, the favelas of Brazil or um, the slums in, um, in other countries where you have populations that have no documentation, no bank accounts, uh, cash-based societies, etc. The impact of Bitcoin today or other cryptocurrencies is probably fairly limited. We've seen a number of proof-of-concept uh, trials where companies try to introduce closed-loop economy uh, based on Bitcoin wallets and things like that. And they're generally treated with skepticism. One of the most interesting ones I, I was uh, talking uh, with someone about recently was an experiment that happened in Argentina. And there, one of the interesting things that, that happened was a generational difference in the way they treated it. So, um, when introduced as this free money drop that happened with uh, Bitcoin and a Bitcoin wallet inside um, a slum in uh, Buenos Aires, the result was that most of the people over 30 treated this as easy money that probably wasn't going to be around for a while and with some suspicion, and they immediately cashed it in and converted it to Argentinian pesos or bought things with it as quickly as possible. They treated it as uh, money that doesn't hold its value. Um, which, based on their experience of the Argentinian peso versus what they know as hard money, like the US dollar or gold or things like that, makes a lot of sense. Uh, people under 30, on the other hand, ended up holding it, uh, because they were more familiar with the concept of cryptocurrency in some cases, and saw this as an interesting experiment that they could afford to hold for a while. Uh, that's an interesting outcome. Generally speaking, though, uh, the, the fully unbanked are, are not yet served by cryptocurrency in South America. However, um, there, are, there are a whole category of underbanked uh, populations, which includes the vast majority of the middle class throughout, uh, throughout the Latin world. And uh, for underbanked, we would consider people who are under currency controls and do not have the ability to freely exchange their local currency for a stronger currency like the US dollar. They don't have the ability to freely move money in and out of the country to invest in a variety of investments without uh, the kind of heavy confiscatory taxes you see. Um, when there is an economic crisis. And that describes the vast majority of the middle class in, in places like Argentina, uh, but also big chunks of the middle and lower class throughout uh, Central and South America. And so for them, I think, again, the primary use case today um, for Bitcoin in those areas is the preservation of wealth. Uh, and that means investing in Bitcoin uh, as the means of saving, just like in the past they uh, would have all of their savings in dollars. The, the advantage here is that uh, in many of these countries, uh, dollar-based accounts are either impossible to open, or worse, um, the government has demonstrated more than once that they're quite willing to go in and uh, confiscate the dollar-based accounts by converting them to the local currency forcibly uh, at a uh, ludicrous exchange rate uh, that doesn't match the actual value, thereby confiscating the savings uh, of the people who held those accounts. That happened in Argentina uh, not too long ago. Um, a couple, I think it was about 15 years ago. 
um, when they converted all dollar accounts to pesos. So, um, you know, the advantage of Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency is you don't put it in a bank where the government can go in and either forcibly convert it or seize it or uh, come up with some newfangled imaginary tax to confiscate it. Uh, in any case, that kind of preservation of wealth is, is one of the applications that we're seeing. Um, throughout Latin America. The other one, which again is still growing gradually, is, um, is remittances and outsourced workers. So either workers in Latin America who are working for companies, uh, say in North America or Europe, doing online work, and that could include uh, working as virtual assistants, as uh, data entry professionals, uh, translators, or in the high-tech industry, web designers, developers, system administrators, accountants, etc. And um, earning money from abroad, and rather than paying exorbitant fees to get paid via PayPal, which again has all kinds of problems in its practical use in Latin America, um, instead getting paid directly in, in Bitcoin and then exchanging that money either using a local exchange or uh, over the counter with other people in the country who want to acquire Bitcoin. Um, and finally, the classic case of remittances, where people who work in other countries as immigrants uh, send money home to their family and their loved ones. And um, Bitcoin is a better mechanism in many cases to send money. And instead of paying an exorbitant fee to Western Union, or uh, Wells Fargo, or MoneyGram, or one of these uh, services, instead earn a slight premium. Because in most of these countries, due to the lack of liquidity and the uncertainty around the local currency, uh, Bitcoin trades at a significant premium, sometimes 10%, sometimes as high as 25%. So if you move your Bitcoin from, say, North America, to uh, let's say Argentina to send money home to your family, and then your your family in Argentina converts that Bitcoin uh, into U.S. dollars or pesos. Um, they can convert any amount they want, and the fees they're going to pay on that conversion um, are actually going to be overcome by the fact that they're going to charge a premium because Bitcoin is uh, only available at a premium. So people really want to get Bitcoin in those countries, and they'll pay extra for it. Or if you think about it the other way, the Argentinian peso is trading as a discount against Bitcoin, uh, which is really the case. Uh, and so, therefore, instead of paying five percent to PayPal, or Wells Fargo, or Western Union, they earn ten percent. Uh, as a premium by transmitting using Bitcoin, so it's a minus 10% uh, transfer fee. That's pretty pretty neat. So those are the kinds of applications we mostly see uh, in Latin America. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and share. All my work is shared for free. So if you want to support it, join me on Patreon.